and our country. On January 25, 1971, many people thronged the streets of Kampala to welcome Idi Amin, who had emerged victorious from a coup to capture state power. Not to be left out, musicians competed to release songs in praise of a new president. <laughs> Uganda believed in a new dawn, and President Idi Amin did not disappoint because his antipathy towards the colonial legacy was well known. <laughs> Al Haj Edirisa Mayanja Njuchi was a sports reporter working with the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting when Idi Amin became president. He had met Amin earlier in 1968 at Nachivubo Stadium, and the two became close friends. In 1975, Njuchi was appointed head of the presidential press unit. Idi Amin liked this country, Uganda, from the beginning. Maybe later things started changing, but he did not want to work with the British or to work with Europeans. That was one of the things he told us almost at the takeover. At midnight on December 17, 1972, Amin addressed the nation on Uganda's economic war. He talked about his dream for the economic empowerment of indigenous Ugandans. He also informed the nation that he had decided to rename physical features whose colonial names were insignificant to independent Uganda. Some of the renamed roads included Prince Charles Drive, to be called 25th January Avenue, Lumumba Avenue, formerly Queens Road, and Kuruma Road, which had been Salisbury Road. Rosebury Road became Nasa Road, Hunter Road took on Luthuli Avenue, Harcourt Avenue became Kimathi Avenue, and the Borop Avenue was Christian Malcolm X Avenue. Queen Elizabeth National Park was renamed Renzori National Park. Makishon Falls became Kabalega Falls, while Makishon Falls National Park was changed to Kabalega National Park. Meanwhile, he changed Lake Albert to Lake Idi Amin Dada and renamed Lake Edward, Lake Mobutu Seseko, after Zaire's president. He was somebody who was learning to be a president, learning uh, a person who wanted coverage, full coverage, and he would want everything that he has said to, I mean, to, be, to, be on, uh, to, to appear as he said it. In 1974, the sportsman in Amin wanted Ugandans to watch the Rambo in the Jungle boxing event held in Kinshasa, Zaire, between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. For this, he expedited the construction of Mpoma Satellite Station. All those ministries that were involved started carrying out the project and identified out of so many places, identified in Mpoma, in Mukono, for the for the station to be built. In his August 1972 address, Amin explained why he had expelled people of Asian origin, Israelis and the British. In Uganda's colonial setup, the Asians were second to the British and other Europeans, while indigenous Ugandans occupied the lower ranks of society because they did not have economic power. According to Jafar Amin, Idi Amin's son, the expulsion was not spontaneous. He was sleeping with at the house of his good friend Atheo in Karamoja, but he actually flew there with all the intention of, of making a decision on the issues of the South Asians. But when he stayed there, he claimed he had this dream. From there, he said, no, let me go to Tororo, to Bothofumbi. So these two people tended to be his key advisors. Using the Common Man's Charter as his blueprint, through the Uganda Development Corporation, Amin launched into a series of developmental work, such as building a tooling shed in Nalukolongo, equipping textile company Nitil Uganda Limited, and purchasing international routes for Uganda Airlines, such as Brussels, London, Rome, Cologne, and Dubai. When we had that issue with Kenya, he realized the problem, because Gaddafi was shuttling in by air fuel so he actually went and built underground reservoirs for fuel that could last for him he was thinking military he said it could last for six months hmm? that capacity is sitting in uh, mbale 
probably unutilized. Samwiri Kasoma, a self-styled Amin scholar who began following the leader's actions in 1967, says Amin's nationalism was also felt in the entertainment world. <laughs> Although he wanted to dismantle the colonial legacy, Amin's decrees were revoked when he was overthrown, and some of the infrastructure he had set up is no more. Gillian Nantume, NTV.